Hello everyone, today we'll be looking at AP Calculus BC 2007 uh, for your response question number one. Uh, this will be using integrals and finding the area between two curves as well as finding volume using integrals. So, by looking at this problem we can tell that we have a function and a line cutting the function. Uh, so the first part A is saying find the area of R which is basically just finding area under the curve. B says find the volume of a solid generated when rotated about the x-axis. So we're going to be looking for volume there. And finally C uh, references a cross-section. So that's going to be volume with cross-sections. Alright. So for the first, first thing you might want to do is graph the functions. So in red is the 20 over 1 plus x squared, and the green is y equals 2. Uh, to find where they intersect, um, you can either, if you have a graphing calculator, you can do second calculate intersect, or the best way to do it, if you don't have a calculator, and if you want to understand conceptually, uh, set the two equations equal to each other. So you would have, say, uh, oops, 20 over 1 plus x squared equals 2, and then after doing some math, of course, you'll get x equals plus or minus 3. So notice how those are the coordinates here, 3 and negative 3. Oops, negative 3. And then you'd find the corresponding output uh, for each, for the um, values at the points where they intersect. So that's just giving you a visual idea of how to approach this. And then, so part A was finding area, correct? So. Um, how do we find area? Well, we're going to have to integrate. And we're going to integrate from where they intersect. So, we know that since we set the equations equal to each other, it's going to be from A, which is negative 3, to B, which is 3. Alright, and you know when finding the area between two curves, a formula or the concept is the top curve minus the bottom curve. So, you're just going to take the first function minus the bottom function, which in this case is just 2. And always remember your dx. Awesome. Alright, and then once you integrate, you will have a calculator handy. You would get, hold on a second, it would be approximately 37.961, and if there were units, it would be units squared. And that's our answer right there. And remember that number represents the area between the two curves. Next, we're going to find the volume of the solid when it's generated about generated about the x-axis. Basically, what that means is that this uh, area that we found would be rotated around in a circular uh, fashion, I guess. And the same function would be here, and you would have a 3D figure all the way around, and it would look something like that. It's difficult to see it in two dimensions, but if you had a figure, um, it, it would just be easier to see it in real life. But moving back to the volume, basically, when you rotate something around uh, an axis, it creates a circular shape. And you know for finding the area of a circle, um, its area is pi r squared. So that's kind of where this formula is generated from slightly. but the, really what you're doing is when you rotate around the x-axis, you depending on where you're rotating, there could be a hole, and you'd have to subtract where that hole is, but the formula for finding volume in this case is pi times the integral from a to b of r squared minus little r squared dx. And what that tells us is the big r we calculated was part a, so that was just the area under the curve and the little r squared would be the hole and that would be created when you rotate it around the axis if there is one and um, basically you would just use that formula so um, right here I guess we'll just move on so we know that our uh, limits of integration are negative 3 to 3 and our first function was 20 over 1 plus x squared. Square the entire thing. A lot of people forget to square that. They usually just square it once, but you have to square both big R and little r. 
and 2 squared and dx. Alright, so what we would get is approximately 1,871.190. Usually you might want to round to three significant figures. It's probably a pretty good idea when you're taking the AP test. And since this is volume, it would be units cubed, but you don't have to worry about that. I just like putting that down so I make a mental note to myself and on the paper of what exactly I'm doing. Okay, moving on to cross sections. All right, when finding volume with cross sections, basically it's like pretend you have a, I guess, a loaf of bread or something that's uh, easily able to be cut, I guess. And you cut it in half or just a certain part of it, and you look at the face of the slice, and it would have a certain shape. So it's saying if we take a knife and cut the graph, the three-dimensional graph, and when we look at its face, they're saying that it's a semicircle. Semicircle. So, and the semicircle is perpendicular to the x-axis. So to find volume, you basically are going to add up an infinite number of semicircles to get the volume of the region. Basically, to approach this problem, you need to know what the area of a semicircle is. And the area of a circle you know to be is pi r squared. So simply, if that's a full circle, what's a semicircle? Semi means half, so you just have to half the area. And that's key here. Okay, so I turned the graph sort of at an angle so you can see this better. When we rotated our region around the x-axis, uh, it makes a circular shape here. And since ours is a semicircle, see how the radius is from the x-axis to the uh, first line, first curve to the second curve? So basically, what you have to do is, since the, um, you know the diameter of the semicircle is basically what we found R in part A. Well, now, since it's a semicircle and the area for a semicircle is 1 half pi R squared, we're going to have to take half of that to get to the radius. So, our radius is 1 half uh, top curve minus bottom curve, which is, which is that. So now we simply have to integrate from, we know where the intersection points are still remain the same, limits of integration are negative 3 to 3, and we know that our radius is 1 half um, 20 over 1 plus x squared minus 2. So we have to square that and multiply by 1 half pi. So why don't we just put that over here as pi over 2 on the outside, and then multiply by the radius, so here's the radius. And remember to square that, dx. So let's just analyze this real quick. This is the radius. This is the squared from that squared. And this one, the 1 half pi for the area is there's the 1 half pi. So basically, um, if you want to make it more, I guess, neat or simplified, if you did not have a calculator and you had to evaluate this, using antiderivatives, but just to make this simple, it would be since we would just multiply like that and the derivative. Hold on one second. So we get pi over 8 because 1 half squared is 1 fourth times pi over 2, so it's like 1 half times 1 fourth is 1 eighth, and then pi is in the numerator. And then that's just simplified and you would get approximately uh, 174 point. 268 for your answer. And this is the volume using cross sections, and in this case with a semicircle. Awesome. Great job, guys.